Hey everybody, welcome back to more Mega Man 3. In the last episode we took out Snake Man and Gemini Man. In this episode we're going to go to Needle Man. Oh my god, the music in this game is so good. I love Needleman's theme, it's great. Um, and the stage isn't that bad either. There's going to be these cannon things that you can take care of them in a couple shots, no problem. Met tools are back from the first and second games. Act the same way if they're hiding in their helmet. Can't damage them. Once they peek out at you, it's your chance to attack them. There's more of these dragonfly enemies. Not too bad. Those little porcupine or hedgehog enemies, I'm not entirely sure what they're supposed to be. Um... They will shoot needles at you, they do take a lot of hits, and on top of that, they will constantly shoot and roll over the place. So, I guess in that case, they're, they're hedgehogs. Oh my god, it's Sonic again. I can't, ex I can't escape Sonic. Okay, I'm kidding. I love Sonic. But anyways, yeah, those hedgehog enemies are kind of difficult to deal with, so I recommend just... Um, yeah, if they start uh, shooting their spines at you, I recommend just avoiding them entirely just because they have such a short window to, um, to attack. They can only be attacked when they're not in their ball form. And on top of that, once they're out of their ball form, they're um, constantly shooting needles at you, so it's kind of hard to attack them well. Um, you can shoot out the needle. You can shoot towards the needles and they will disappear, but it's still, it's not that great to take them out. Plus, most of the time they don't even drop anything, so not recommended. There's these, there's these guys from Snake Man stage that th sh um, shoot their little wrecking balls at you. Um, you can slide under them or you can just find a spot to just hide while you shoot them constantly. These guys only get hurt once their eyes are peeking out, but most of the time I just like to run towards them and slide. And we are at Needleman. Yeah, that was kind of a short stage. Not too bad at all. Alright. So here we get Gemini Laser. Now, Gemini Laser is kind of not a great weapon. It's going to just go straight and bounce off walls. Um, whether it hits an enemy is not like in, in your control. I died. Great. I didn't really want to use an E-Tank because I thought I could take him on, but it's fine. I'll spawn right over here. So it's all good. If you die, um, your weapon energy stays the same. However, if you game over, they'll all be refilled without you having to refill any of it with the weapon energy. Yeah. Okay, so the problem is, if you miss your Gemini laser, it will just keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And you have no chance to, to redirect it or anything. You can't even pause to change weaponry um, while it's bouncing around like that. So Gemini laser is not really that great. It does take out some, uh, certain enemies in one hit, which is really nice, but if you miss them, it's a real detriment because you can't even switch weapons while it's bouncing around. But enough of that, uh, Needle Man's dead. I don't think I even explained what he does. He's just going to jump around and shoot Needle at you. Don't get too close to him, though, because he does that little headbutt attack, and that attack really hurts, so you want to stay away from him. And we get the Needle Cannon and Rush Jet. Now, Rush Jet is overpowered. I'm just going to say that much. Um, we're gonna go on with Top Man. And, hmm, it looks like Top Man has a certain type of hobby that's, uh... Let's just say it calms him down a lot. Anyways, um, we're gonna just keep sliding through here. Top Man stage is not really hard, it's just more so annoying because these really annoying enemies. They can only hit them when they're in the air. Otherwise they completely ignore damage and it's just really not fun. I don't like it a lot. I I don't like these enemies a lot. Um, but apart from that it's not too bad. There are some areas with spikes which if you know Mega Man spikes instant death. You don't want to touch them. And then you go down here. There's these Metool guys with the cranes or the I guess tractors or whatever. 
Um, they're really easy to take down. All you have to do is shoot them three times. They don't even hide in their helmet like other med tools do, so... They're really easy. You don't have to worry about them at all. Then, there's, these are regular med tools, which are, for some reason, more threatening than metal. And the... Man! What is it with these item drops? And now, I, I didn't even need it before he dropped it. Now that... Um, I... <laughs> now that I got it, I actually need it. Now there's going to be these tiger en robotic enemies. They're going to shoot yarn balls at you. They're really easy to dodge though, so just keep shooting it with your Mega Buster. These guys shoot top spinners at you, but they disappear in one hit, so you don't really need to do much. Now this one will actually spawn in ticks if you don't um, kill it fast enough. And those ticks are really annoying to deal with, so you want to be careful with that. There's another um, big life energy. If I can get up there. I don't know. I mean, let's not judge Top Man too fast quickly. Maybe he's just really into nature. Maybe he just likes plant life a lot. What kind of plants? Well, I don't want to know, but... <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm done with the marijuana jokes. Alright, and... Now, this section, you would have to jump on each platform and try to get through it that way, but we just got Rush Jet in the last boss fight, and I guess I'll take this moment to show it off here. Now, Rush Jet is straight up overpowered. Um, you can move in all four directions. Um, he lasts as long as his weapon energy is up. You can see up there in the corner, it's uh, slowly draining away. And you can actually make it even slower, because if you keep jumping, um, it will actually drain the energy slower, since it only drains... Um, while you're on Rush himself. So yeah, a robotic dog that lets you fly. Tell me what kid in the 90s would not want that. If you don't want that, then you're crazy. Anyway, Top Man is really easy. All he's going to do is spin around and then uh, run into, try to run into you and then shoot his uh, top spins. They're all going to, all three of them are going to home in on the spot that you were last standing in. So if you just run for a little bit and slide, you'll dodge them no problem. Yeah, I say that and I keep getting hit by them. So yeah, um, he will be completely invincible while he's spinning, so you don't want to shoot him while he's spinning. You just want to wait for him to move over. Um, the thing that catches me most off guard is um, whenever he's going to start charging at you. I feel like I feel like it takes a little longer than it should for him to start charging at you, but he's real easy. Um, his weakness would be the hard knuckle, but we don't actually have that yet, so I just take him on with my normal Mega Luster, and he's really easy. Still love that song, man. We got the top spin. Now this weapon sucks. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This weapon is probably one of the worst weapons we've seen in the classic Mega Man's up to date. Now, in Mega Man's 1 and 2, I would have never said, like, there are some weapons that seem a bit situational, but, I mean, Crash Bombs is okay. You know, Airman's weapon, um, you can't really aim it, but it's it does good damage, and it's really a good answer for those mech guys. You know, there's usefulness for every weapon in, in both Mega Man 1 and 2. Like, Bomb Man in Mega Man 1, it's a radius weapon. It's a fine... Oh, before I talk about this, um, this is Break Man. He's just going to be jumping and shooting at you. All you want to do is get close to him, slide whenever he turns around, and then just shoot him in the back. Really not a difficult boss, but anyway... Um, yeah, he's dead. Yeah, but there's a usefulness for every weapon in Mega Man 1 and 2, however situational, but there is. The top spin is terrible. It is actually the worst. So let me show you this. Um, well, here you go. You can see Mega Man just like spinning. I'm pressing B. You, so there you see the first problem. It's not ranged. You can't hit any enemies um, from a range. Sure, whenever you run into them and you time it correctly, they're imp um, you're impervious to damage as long as you time it right. But you can see here, I'm losing so much health because I'm trying to kill these enemies with the top spin. I have to walk right up on them and then time the button press right. The only good thing about the top spin is that if you don't hit any enemies and don't do damage, it doesn't waste any energy, which is nice, but it's just the worst move. You have to be right up on your enemies to the point where you're actually going to get you're actually going to end up taking more damage than your enemies will. 
So, all right, I haven't even explained this section. This section was just a block out, um, blackouts, not block out, blah. There's gonna be these grenade guys. Make sure you shoot them from a distance because their radius will hurt you if you're too close. But other than that, just jump your way through. It's nothing too bad. But yeah, the top spin, man, I don't, I like a lot of the weapons in Mega Man 3, but the top spin is a real downgrade from anything from the first two games as far as we've seen. It has literally no applications to any enemies whatsoever, and the boss that's weak to it, you're probably going to die, not from the boss itself, but just from, just from having to... Um, just from having to jump into the boss the entire time just for a chance of damaging it. Anyway, this section is... Oh wow, I didn't realize how low my health was. <laughs> I didn't realize that my health was that low from trying to freaking use the top spin. You see, like, the top spin is really not... It's just not useful. I don't like the top spin. But anyway, enough about dogging on the top spin. This is not a negative uh, playthrough of Mega Man 3. That will be coming later. Actually, no, it won't be. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, these guys... Um, can be quite a bit annoying because of the knockback. It, um, it feels like they decreased the knockback a little bit from the previous two games, so that's good at least, but yeah. These enemies can knock you back into the lava pit, so you want to be very careful. Um, Gemini Laser... Wow, thanks game. Real nice. Okay, whatever. Yeah, but Gemini Laser is a really good answer for these guys. Like, I know I said that Gemini Laser kind of is not great because if you shoot and miss... Um, it will bounce off the walls, but in that section with those parachute guys, especially since they die in one hit, it's actually pretty useful. See, even a weapon that I said was not that great has an application. Top spin, nothing. It is literally a useless weapon. Now this is Shadow Man. Shadow Man is kind of like is kind of like how the Metal Blade was in Mega Man 2. He's gonna be jumping around and shooting these Metal Blades at you, or Shadow Blades. Blah, excuse me. I guess if the proper term would be Shurikens. He's going to shoot either two at a time or one at a time, and they're going to come back to him. He's not that difficult of a boss. Well, yeah, he's not that difficult of a boss. It's just the weapon that he's weak to, the top spin, is really hard to, hard to use, and you'll probably die a couple times just trying to hurt him. But Yeah, and you see we got Rush Marine there. But yeah, Shadow Man has been defeated. I know that was a bit of a mouthful because I was complaining about the top spin a lot, but, well, whatever. Um, I think that's gonna be it for this episode. Next time on Mega Man 3, we'll continue on with Sparkman. See you guys next time.